it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Anarchist Collective, and welcome to the Anarchic Eye for November the 20th, 2013. In a somewhat baffling move, Microsoft have confirmed that the voice commands on the Xbox One will be region locked. This comes from a question on NeoGAF, where a user asked, can I set my Xbox to be able to make voice commands in English even if it is a German machine? They responded, no, the voice commands are region locked. Now, I don't understand how they can't use the pair the cleared to store the voice command prompts and they can be installed on individual machines depending on the languages you wish to speak. That would be logical. That would be a useful use of the online interface. But apparently, they only want the market that they're selling it in to only have access to that language, which I think in an international market, I mean, it clearly, this is clearly a decision that has been made to gimp people importing Xboxes into regions that they haven't launched yet. That seems to me to be the case. For example, if you could have an option, option to turn into English, why couldn't, for example, the people in Poland, who a lot of them will speak a second language, be able to perhaps use French or German or English from the Western European Xboxes? Why? I don't know, but I'm only going to assume purely for the case of price control and hampering the customers. Well, the hardware reviews are out for the Xbox One and they are largely wholly positive. And they are also the embargo on the games. Now, what I wanted to bring up that came out of the hardware reviews was something that I thought was pretty damn funny. Now, the Xbox One is designed in order to power on your television and cable box when you turn it on. It is designed to be, obviously, the all-in-one hub. That is the whole point of the Xbox One. Now, it has it, it's been claimed in the Kotaku review when they played around with the settings and everything, and they have said that the uh, that the uh, that the firmware has been significantly updated since the version they originally got, and they have done a certain amount of bug fixing. Apparently, the the UI was somewhat poor and has been getting better. So it does seem that the launch thing, once all the patches are downloaded, will be a better version than that people have been playing with for the last couple of weeks. But what made me laugh is that when you power on your Xbox One, it's meant to turn on your television, turn off your cable box. Now, it obviously assumes that your Xbox One is on all the time, because it's meant to, you're meant to be watching TV through it, you're meant to be doing everything through it. Now, it's not the only thing that can turn on a television. My Blu-ray player does it, my PS3 does it. It turns on my smart TV when I power on the device. However, when you use the command Xbox on and your television is already on, the interface through the HDMI, all it does is toggle the power switch. It doesn't actually have a, a way of knowing whether the TV is actually on or not. So if your television is in fact on, using the command Xbox on will allegedly turn your fucking telly off. Shit, Microsoft, you need to sort that out, because that's fucking hilarious. Really? Really? You were that certain that this machine was going to be the be-all and on the hub of everyone's home, that in fact, you assume that it's going to be on all the time the television is? Well, I've got news for you. It won't be. Let's be honest, and that is just a goof that you desperately need to fix, because that's just fucking stupid. Well, following a full hardware teardown from AllThingsD.com, they have detailed what they assess as the build price of the PlayStation 4. Now, those of you may remember that the actual PlayStation 3 came in at a net loss of, I think it was 206 US dollars per machine. It was sold at an enormous loss. It was a highly expensive machine, and even when they sold it, it was highly expensive. Now, the build of the PlayStation 4 has been assessed due to a full hardware strip to come out at 381 US dollars. That actually means they've managed to squeeze a profit of 18 dollars per machine. Now that doesn't sound like very much, but when you compare it to the amount of loss they were taking on every single piece of hardware sold for the PlayStation 3, that means the PlayStation 4 is automatically a profitable piece of hardware. As from what I heard previously, the assessment that the Xbox One will also be that, because Microsoft claimed a while back that the machine will be profitable at launch. That suggests that unlike the previous generation, and unlike the Wii U, which I believe is being sold at a loss still, the PlayStation 4 
and the Xbox One are being made to a more economy build that is actually more commensurate to the price. Now, whether that means anything good in the long run, because personally that does somewhat suggest that the hardware is not as good a value for money for the consumer, obviously because they're not taking a loss on it. However, that does mean that the business has a better operating model. And of course, the hardware for the PS4 is substantially cheaper than the PS3 was at launch. So, it's a bit of swings and roundabouts there, but it's an interesting bit of information to have nonetheless. Well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news fans of Star Wars who hate EA. It seems that the exclusivity deal between EA and Disney is going to run for 10 full years. That means that any licensed Star Wars game is going to be published by EA. That's going to mean it has origins. That's going to mean the digital prices will be through the goddamn roof. And that means if you don't want a game that's made by DICE, Visceral or Bioware, you are, I'm afraid, shit out of luck. Well, in a spectacular U-turn, however, some words of caution, EA have come out and actually said that used games are a good thing. Holy shit. They've also come out in defence of physical games. Don't go kissing their ass just yet, of course, because why they're saying it is fairly transparent once you go into what they say. Now, the reason they're talking about physical games being preferable to some customers and still needing to be kept around over digital is purely a matter of bandwidth. Right now, the internet infrastructure is not in place, as everyone has been saying since day bloody one that they brought this up, that they've admitted that the infrastructure is not in place, they cannot have the high-speed downloads to download the 40 gig it takes for a next-gen title. So they have admitted that the infrastructure is not there, therefore physical games will be preferable to a large number of consumers. So, that's some good news. However, bear in mind, that is only as long as they can get away with it. Secondly, they also mentioned used games. They said that used games were an important part because, and for those of you who have argued with me, I doubt you're watching this video because you normally left a snarky comment and fucked off. However, they said that gamers buy physical games because they still retain a financial value, and that justifies the price. You're fucking welcome. Thank you, EA, for saying what I've been saying for the last year. Well, it's nice to be vindicated. However, they are purely saying that, and they said that it will probably be kept along for the foreseeable future. So bear this in mind. The industry, particularly the scabby bastards at EA, are fully aware that they can start pushing to remove your ownership of your games. This is where it starts, it edges into licensing, it turns into digital, and then all of a sudden, all you have is an account. That is what's going to happen. And EA are notorious for shutting their servers down, so their games are going to have a shelf life of a couple of years at most. That's going to try and rush you to be an early adopter of their titles, not wait and see how things are, not wait for patches, not wait to see what DLC is released, not see the reviews. I don't know. Buy it straight away and get as much game time as possible because they're going to shut that fucker down. Be warned. I've said it. Many others have too. This is on the cards. As of right now, the only reason gamers have won is one, because we bitched about it. Oh my god, did we bitch and we should have bitched. And then secondly, because they still, they don't have the power just yet, and they don't have the infrastructure just yet to take it away because they expect us to roll over and take it. So whenever you see your rights being eroded by a company, be very, very sure to speak loud and speak often and tell them just how big a fucking mistake they're making. Fuck all this. Give me, give me, just take my money bullshit. Fuck that. Treat yourself with some respect, treat your money with some respect, treat your goods with some respect, and consider that you are swapping money for goods, not for services. That is not what gaming is. It is a physical media. It is literally an entertainment medium. If you want to deal with a rental service, then deal with a rental service. But when it comes to buying AAA games, that is not a goddamn rental service. That is a purchase. That is why the title is so goddamn expensive. That's why they invest so much in it. It's a sort of a title for the ages that you can pick out and play with your grandchildren if your hardware still works. Be very cautious. Those sneaky bastards are waiting for every opportunity to take you down. And lastly, Peter Moore, the Chief Operating Officer 
of EA has come and tried to ring his trumpet that they are the gamer's friend. Because they've said that the gamers have spoken, he said in his Twitter. One in three games purchased on the PlayStation 4 were in fact published by EA. Now, of course, the launch titles for the PlayStation 4 included Need for Speed, Battlefield 4, Madden and FIFA. Four major, major franchises all available at launch. So, no shit. You didn't really have all that much competition, really. You had Assassin's Creed and you had Call of Duty Ghosts and I, off the top of my head, cannot think of another AAA launch title that you were going up against. So yes, if somebody buys a PlayStation 4 and two or three games, it is highly likely that one of those will be published by EA. That is fairly self-evident. Now, I have been fairly patient with EA because they've been behaving quite well lately. And as with my previous story and with this, you can kind of see their slippery, sneaky little side. You can see the forked tongue flick out between their teeth. This is who they really are. They are manipulative, creepy fucks. As are quite a lot of big business. Let's be honest, that's how they do business. But EA are a particularly bad example of how to be a smug, total toss bag. And here we can see it. Here we can see them coming out and trying to paint themselves as the gamer's friend. When anyone with half a brain knows that they have been on gamer's shit lists since... But, well, really, before, but since they bought Bioware. Since they took over Mass Effect, they've pretty, and Dragon Age, they have been on people's shit lists. So, don't kid yourself, EA. You are nobody's friend at this point. Anyway, guys, you'll be looking through the 2020 vision of the Anarchic Eye. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys later.